There we go. Hey, what's going on, folks? We're over here in Norwalk. We've got a uh, beehive that is kind of interesting because instead of being inside a wall or in a soffit or in someone's eaves, it's actually just hanging out in the middle of the air. So it's up underneath this little, uh, this boat engine here. So you can see they've built this hive completely in open air, which is something that bees will only do during warm weather. You won't see this during the winter or even the early spring when it's cool. So this is definitely a swarm that came over here during probably the last couple months. And they've made their home in this shady area too. It's quite shady over here most of the day, but they're, out, they're able to keep this hive warm just using their own, uh, you know, little bodies as they vibrate and heat it up. So we're gonna see if we can rehome it into this box cut it out and see how long it takes me to get stung. Uh, hold on a second. We got to show Steve too. The obligatory. And Steve is here filming. So the, thank you, Steve. You're very welcome, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate it. Don't thank him. Don't thank him. <laughs> don't thank me yet. Yeah. <laughs> I may end up at the hospital before we get these things out of here. So. And we want it to be hilarious. Yeah. We'll have it on film. So that'll be worth it. Totally worth it, bro. All right. Some of those out. Tool and you have that clean clip. I do. All right, I'm gonna see if I can find she. Wow, these bees are really, really calm. It's 6:30 right now, something like that, and these bees are just chill, laxing. So I'm gonna see if they'll let me get in here without stinging me. See if I can start pulling comb. I haven't smoked them yet because I want to find the queen. She's probably going to be towards the center of the hive. So these outside frames are not going to be... I'm highly unlikely to find her here. She's probably somewhere in here. So I don't want them to hide her. Let's see what we got going here. Don't go ballistic, please. Okay. Ooh, Mr. Ed. See, I've crushed a couple bees. Just tease this off. Now they're starting to get a little interested in me. See, look at, look at them festooning here. Can you see that on film? See how they're hanging? These bees are hanging. That's how they make wax. They hang in these clusters and they put their wax glands of their jaw together and then they build comb like a little 3D printer. No queen yet. So what are you looking for to find the queen? Um, I look for clusters of bees uh, that are kind of grouped together. And uh, we've got some honey up top. All right, we're starting to Ooh, I just got hit. Let me get the smoker. Yep. Got a couple stingers in me. Let me pull those out. They leave a pheromone when they sting you. All right, let me put my full suit on. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to do this with just dish gloves and a <laughs> shirt. A guy can dream though, can't he? Well, no. <laughs> All right, Mike, so the bees went crazy a little bit. You got stuck uh, a little bit. Times. I just got tagged a couple times, so, so I'm gonna be safe down. rather than sorry. I'm gonna try the dish gloves, see if I get stung through them. Uh, we already got one piece of frame here. So I'm gonna start putting these away I'm pretty sure the queen isn't on here because, see how runny the bees are? Usually when the queen's around, they're pretty calm. Um, but we can see this comb here has bee bread in it here. All these cells are packed with a mixture of 
um, pollen and some nectar that they put in there and they ferment it. And that's a protein source for them. And then on the bottom here, you'll notice these, how is flat cap here, these flat cappings, that's all honey. So this is a resource frame for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and wedge this bad boy into a, one of my frames here. I'm gonna have to sacrifice part of it because it won't fit. If the comb don't fit, you, you must have quit. quit. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, We've been friends for so long. I know we finished each other's sentences. So I was going to say sandwiches, but yeah, I'd take sandwiches. <laughs> so, well, sandwiches too. <laughs> yeah, I should have put these on before we left the house. Good morning. When we come out again. Next time, we'll remember. I have a kit. There we go. I might be able to fit this one in there too. Eh. Some of these I'm just gonna leave in the bottom and I'll let them do their thing. Grab stuff off of them. So, but I'm gonna try to keep them in the same order that they are on the hive, so that um, when we put it back together, it's not super. They're already gonna be disoriented, so I don't want to make them any more disoriented than they have to be. But we have. One, two, three, that, those are going to have to be broken up into a couple. So, at least two? Yeah. Here, Quinny, Quinny. Here's your hive tool. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. You had a gentleman in a school. I'm, I'm none of those things, but okay. I know I'm neither, but. I'm neither, but thank you. I think if I cut this here. Okay, no, that's not the way to do this. I'm gonna have to go across the top again. Oh, I just smacked the beehive, literally. Literally just smacked the beehive. Is that working out? Oh. Uh, I've done. I've done better. You had worse Thursday nights. I have. So far. Not yet. No, I'm gonna give them a little smoke, cause they're, like they're gonna. I don't want them to go ballistic. So I may give up on looking for the queen and just grab all the combs and and pray. Yep. Here's a bunch of brood. Wow. This is a healthy hive, very healthy hive. I think what I'm gonna have to do in order to get the combs into my frames is shake the bees off or brush them off and then cut them because I'm afraid if I just, I was thinking about cutting through and then pulling bottom off and then the top off, but I'm afraid I might accidentally kill the queen. Here's your brush. So yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll do a little brush of maru here. It's okay, I'll edit. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. Okay, I got an angle to wear. There we go. Two. All right, yeah, that could be number three. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if I see the queen. No, I feel like doing this before it gets dark is more important than finding the queen at this point. So, running out of the luxury of time. Give me a minute. Ooh, that's a lot of bees. That's a lot of bees.
You can hit? No, I gave our bee host a chunk of hive. Oh, uh, nice. To go give with some honey on it to go show the family. Let's see if there's anything. Look at this, a couple of swarm cells. Looks like they've hatched. This hive might have swarmed, and that may be why there's fewer bees. And they have ripe queen cells in here, so they could be queenless. Or they could be ready to swarm and they haven't yet. So, they're, But they're actively making queen cells, so that tells me that they either recently swarmed or they're preparing to. They adjusted. Yeah, I think they ran out of space. Or they don't love being like this, here. This will do, this is their summer condo. Yeah, but like they gotta get a, a winter home somewhere, you know? Somewhere so, in Baja. So you mentioned earlier this hive's outside, warmer weather, winter comes. Yeah. What's going to happen to this hive if we left it alone? Um, they'd probably abandon it and try to find a new place to live. Okay, so they would just, as a soul storm, go and find that. Yeah. They, eventually it would get too cold. They wouldn't be able to maintain the temperature and they'd dip. Okay. And then you'd have open comb. And then probably next summer another hive, another bunch of bees would come occupy it. So. Okay. This. Is that white stuff gushing out? That is me killing larva. Okay. Sadly, but no. they'll bounce back. They'll actually eat that. Interesting. Because it's protein. They'll just nosh on their dead young. They'll nosh on their dead young, bro. <laughs> that's straight from, that's minor profit stuff right there. That's <laughs> we, like Deuteronomy, we, Deuteronomical, or however you say it, yeah. and, and minor profit. That's funny, dude. <laughs> they, and we shall nosh upon our young. That's Seeing if I can sear. If I can, great. I'll grab her. If not, what I'm doing is taking the whole comb off, brushing all the bees off in the box, and then putting the comb into my boxes. So, oh, sweetie, where are you? There's a lot of bees right here. She could be up here. go. When you brush bees, you got to use short strokes. If you do big, long brushes, you'll roll them and kill a bunch of them. And if your queen's in there, you can kill the queen. So whenever you use a bee brush, the trick is you can even do it better by starting from the bottom and moving up. So that way you don't roll bees from the top down. But if you get good at it, you flick them. You're trying to flick them off. You're not trying to brush them off. And I've seen several of these queen cells. There was, there's one on this other frame here that has a larva in it. So they're preparing to swarm or they may have swarmed already. So we'll see what happens. See if we can get them and get the queen or if she's already gone. So it's possible she's gone already. You okay back there, Ron? Yeah, this is a really good hive. I'm. Yeah, chain link is a, is surprisingly effective at keeping bees at bay. Fun fact. <laughs> we should all just start wearing this uh, bee suit. That'll keep the coronavirus away. Yeah. Well, I misjudged that one. Not just good, it's good enough. Yep. Eh, what the heck, just wedge that in there too, why not? Why not, dang it. Just smush that in there. Good enough. All right.
Not a lot of stingers. So that's a plus. They're not not too shabby. She was some. If she was going to be findable, she'd probably be on this comb because it's. This is a comb she'd be laying in. Because there's a lot of open cells and there's not a lot going on except for some honey up top. She may be under this cluster of bees. Nope. Oh well. Hopefully we got her. We'll find out. Eventually. Can that one, can that one just fit long ways? Um, you want to orient it so that the cells point upward. Awesome. When they build comb, they build it so that these cells actually, it's hard to see, but they point very slightly upward at about like seven degrees. And that's so that when they put a larva or honey or something in it, it holds it. It doesn't pour out. Yeah, so if you turn it sideways like this, then it'll dump out. Okay. So unfortunately, even though this would fit perfect like this, if you put it in there that way, they won't be able to use it. So you got to break it and orient it so that the cells face upward for them. Good. Let's see. Break it right there. You might grab me a couple more bands. I'm yeah. gonna do a. That's why I keep you around, Steve. I'm a beekeeper, buddies. <laughs> so we've got most of the comb off. We've got this cluster of bees up here still. Um, I'm gonna look for the queen for just a minute and see if I can't find her in here. It's possible she's in here, but a lot of times they'll cluster around her and hide her. So if I can get her to come out, I'll grab her with a clip. And we'll put her in the hive in the clip, and then we'll release her after a while, probably tomorrow morning. If I can't find her, I'm just going to sweep them in there and try to be gentle and basically just spray and pray. So I'm just going to tap the bees a little bit with the brush to get them to move so I can try to see if the queen is behind there. They're tightly clustered together here. No, not seeing them. So I'm gonna just push this under and we're just gonna gently flick the bees with a brush in there. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can see the queen. in there I can't see her. Just flick them in. I'm gonna cut the rest of this comb off so there's nothing there to hold them. No reason for them to stay other than the queen and it'll make her easier to find. I'll just remove this comb from the box later on. I'm trying not to crush any bees here but you're gonna get a couple. It's inevitable. What's remarkable about this is that as many bees as are flying around right now, they're all just sort of, if you notice, I like just lean back and they're not really that interested in me. They're interested in their home. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of this comb off. There's a good cluster back here as well. So the queen could be holding back there maybe. Good. 
400 bees back there. So they're used to this being their home and they're flying back because of their instinct to go home at this point. So all the workers are back, pretty much, most of them are. see a queen. Most likely she's on one of the frames that we put in there. Well, that's probably about all we're going to get off this one. The rest of them are flying, so it's going to be hard to get these workers because they're just going to keep clustering on this thing. So what I think I might do is get in here and get as many of them as I can, and we're gonna button it up and call it. So I'm gonna flick the rest of these down one more time, and we're gonna put the screen on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's all of our frames. Okay, it's time to call it. Green top on. Go. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a clutch of bees here for probably a few days. Eventually they will either die or leave. But if you see them building comb again, it means we missed the queen. Just call me and I'll come back and try to find her. Okay. 